Among the many powerful features of pivot tables in Excel is a grouping capability, and it works particularly well when working with date data. In this worksheet called Grouping, we're seeing a pivot table that's based on data in the Creating Worksheet. We want to make a change here and analyze the data by date. Sales by date by region. We'll uncheck the box for product, click the box for date, and this will automatically appear in the rows area. Gee, that doesn't fit most people's idea of a pivot table. Aren't they supposed to be somewhat compact, showing us the big picture? Well, that certainly doesn't show us the big picture very easily. We've got to do a lot of scrolling. Let's make some sense out of this. With date data, we simply need to right click on it and choose group to open up some options for possibly grouping this by months or quarters or years, or maybe all three or any two of them. Let's just group this by months, see what happens. And suddenly we've got a pretty compact list here of data grouped by month. The source data does represent two years so we're looking at January totals for two separate years. I wouldn't call that wrong, but we might want to consider pulling in years here as well as quarters. But you see how quickly that happened. We've got totals by month. It's pretty consistent here, but we've got some highs, we've got some lows and so on. Same total we've been seeing, 7997. Let's right click again, this time on one of the monthly entries. Choose group again, and this time, Choose quarters and years. Click OK. Now we've got the data broken out by year. Here's our 2010 data right here. Within that by quarter and then month, and then similarly for 2011. And furthermore, in the pivot tables field list, as we look at this, look in the row areas down below here. So I expand this list a bit. All three fields are represented. Now, the original source data had a field called date, and we see that here, but for the moment, the word date is a little bit misleading or not quite accurate. Let's click the word date, type the word month. And by the way, that also made a change to the pivot table field list, month. It did not change the source data, however. Our original source data contains a date field. And looking at this information, either for display reasons or printing reasons, we might want to simplify it a bit. And maybe we don't want to see the months for the moment. We want to see simply a quarter breakout by year. So what are we going to do with month? We could eliminate the month field from rows or simply drag it into the filters area. So now our pivot table is simplified. And at different times as we view this data, we are interested in this look or that look. And we might try things we wouldn't initially have expected. What if we were to flip the order of years and quarters? I'm going to drag the year field below quarters. And that gives us the option of comparing two quarters together. Here are the first quarters side by side. And sometimes we want to see the data that way. So in manipulating these fields, and we wouldn't really be counting the number of different options, there could be a time when we want to show the months and years together, not the quarters. And then consider here, changing the order. And we're emphasizing the idea here that you want to experiment with the data at times. Sure, you have a sense of what it is you want to do most of the time, but sometimes you're experimenting. And nothing you do here with the pivot table in any way alters or threatens your original data. In the current display, you could make the case for saying, well, those subtotals are a bit unnecessary. We don't need those. Let's go to the design tab in the ribbon. Subtotals do not show subtotals. So there's some other options available there too. Recognize also, and more obviously when we have three fields involved. So I'm gonna bring quarters back and put month below quarters we see the various minuses, the collapsing symbols in front of the entries for two of the outer fields. The month here is a so-called inner field. It's closer to the data. If I collapse quarter two here to one row, the other quarter two for the next year collapses as well. Maybe for the moment, we're only interested in focusing on the detail within quarter four. So we'll collapse quarter one. It'll happen in both years. 
and quarter three. And we're only focusing on the quarter four entries for the two years. So here too, another set of tools to make this display be what you want it to be. For the moment, we're not interested in the 2010 detail. Let's collapse it. Keep in mind that control Z, meaning undo, can also be very helpful when you're working with pivot tables. Let's go back to a previous display here by pressing control Z repeatedly here to return to some of our previous displays. So there's so many tools here that you can use. Another one, often not referred to in manuals on pivot tables. We click May, nothing unusual there. Slide the mouse pointer to the left. It'll become a black arrow. Click May. Well, the other May is highlighted as well. If for whatever reason we wanted to emphasize that month, we could go to the Home tab, make it be yellow or blue or some other field. And as we manipulate the data here in different ways, and we're not necessarily trying to bring out the yellow, but we see how it's going to stay in place. And we might even bring region here from the columns area, put it in the row area, and put years in columns and manipulate the data that way. Maybe that's better, maybe that's not, but we have all these possibilities. And it's not exactly a game we're playing here. We're trying to get to the best display. And this ability to manipulate data by date is extremely helpful. Analyzing data by date using the grouping capability will also work if you're working with times of day. If we had time of day sale here, that would certainly be appropriate. And if we were to right click on an entry like that and choose group, and we can even see it here, although we don't have the data available, we can analyze data by hours of the day. You could also group data by days every 14 days. Maybe you have a sales meeting every 14 days, or maybe you group your sales information in two week increments. We could simply group this by days and not months, quarters, and years, and then perhaps group it by 14 days, something like that. And now we have the data grouped in two week increments. So many capabilities with this feature, the ability to group data by date.